put down a line of ink. Now I try to, when I can, avoid putting ink all the way into the corner here because once it gets in the corner it becomes pretty messy. Uh, so I'll pull it from, you know, almost the top to almost the bottom this way and uh, um, print that way. Okay, so I'll do a flood stroke. And I scrape pretty hard when I do my flood stroke. And then print. It looks good. I can see it's sticking a little oops, down here. The paper is sticking. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll just put spacers under here. I've got these things I'll just tape under with uh, um, painter's tape to lift it up a bit. And then since it's a big thing of ink that might pull the paper up, I'll probably keep spraying a little bit of spray mount underneath uh, every, I don't know, five or ten prints, whenever it seems like it's sticking. Okay, so now I'm set. I can print away. There we go. And then print. And I put in these little spacers. So this is sitting up high enough that I could probably even do the fuzz stroke without lifting the, the screen. But I think I'll lift the screen just to make sure it's not on the paper. And now I usually put on some music and print away. Okay, now I'm done with the first layer. And I'm just gonna pick up the excess ink with this scraper. It's like a paint scraper I'm using for this. And I always save the excess ink because uh, there's always a fair amount back on there that you can use again at some point. And then um, for this print, I'm actually going to do something a little weird, which is I'm going to print right on top without moving this at all. And I actually don't mind if a little of this black gets mixed in. Um, use this weird uh, stuff that's by a company called Green Galaxy and it's their something called Interstellar Effect Silver Flare which is uh, this weird thing that's it's not even an ink it's just just binder plus a uh, little like dust from Swarovski crystals or something like that it's, it's basically like like microscopic glitter I got it from uh, my spouse Jenny and uh, at the advice of a friend who uh, knows a lot about this thanks a lot Robbie Poor and uh, it's really kind of cool. It just leaves this like sparkly thing on top. So what I'm doing with this print that's really weird is it's gonna have this black layer that you can just barely see, see that black circle there, um, and the sparkly stuff on it. And then I'm gonna print the virus right over it. And you're really not gonna see the black much at all there. You might see a little of the reflection from the sparkly stuff. And then over time, I'm gonna leave these outside on like telephone poles and stuff. The black just about disappears against a telephone pole. You hardly see it. And so there'll be just white viruses all over where I staple them up around town. And then the black will slowly fade in the, in the light. So over a matter of weeks, this will go to lighter and lighter gray. And I think with the black ink and this stuff, I've got sort of two chances to block all the light from uh, fading this stuff. I think what's going to happen is you'll still see the black ink it might not fade nearly as much. And I think we'll get black with a gray background, which I think would be kind of cool to see that change over time. So I'll shake the silver flare stuff and put a little down. This is super liquidy. And that'll probably get real dirty looking with the uh, black mixing in with it, but I, I don't mind since there's a black layer under there. Um, I'm guessing it'll hardly show up. And since it'll have a bright white uh, virus in front of it, uh, I'm guessing even if it does give a little contrast, it's not going to be so noticeable. And now I'm ready to print some. Okay, so I'm all done printing. I decided to print half of them with that uh, sparkly stuff, and only half of them because I just thought it would be interesting to do an experiment here, try some with it, some without it. And so now I'm going to scrape as much of this off as I can. I'll even get, a, get an old rag and, and wipe some because, because I uh, spray these out in my yard. I don't want to have a uh, I want to minimize how much you know bits of paint and other stuff is in the grass and stuff. So you can just throw that out. Okay, instead of the washout bay, we have the washout tree. If you've printed before, you know that dried ink is like uh, is a real pain if it dries off into there. So I'll spray it off well, and then once I get it mostly sprayed, I'll go in and back into the shed and get a 
a rag to really wipe it down well as I'm spraying. Okay, this is all dry and I'm ready for round two. So now since I'm doing a two layer print, I want to make sure that that new layer lines up, registers with this old one. And the way I've done this is I've put tape on each of the corners, just a little bit of blue tape, painter's tape on each of the corners. And I'm just going to look through and make sure when I look through that things line up. And I keep adjusting the paper so it fits, lines up really well. And usually I do a lot more adjusting than I think I have to, to make sure I have it right. And this one's quite hard to see because the kind of print it is. I think that's good, and if it's not... Okay, so that's well lined up, and now what I'm going to do is I'll go on the other side, and I'm going to um, spray some spray mount. And then as long as I mark off where that is, I can make sure I get every print well registered with the previous one. There's lots of other ways to do registration. Some people use pins, pin registration. Uh, there's a bunch of ways to do registration. Okay, so now I just need to put um, card in the corners like I did before. And then every piece of paper will land, or cardstock will land right where it should. I usually use the same cardstock as I'm printing on, so I know it's the exact same thickness and I don't run into any troubles, even if I'm printing right up to the edge. Okay, so that'll hold pretty well, and I'm ready to print. Okay, I like how that's coming out, but it's, uh, it's got this one tiny dot down here. There it is. Down at the bottom right there that I don't want there. So I'm just gonna, I can tell there's a tiny gap in the screen right around here. And so I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on that. Okay, I'm done with the regular prints, and then when I'm done, I always print a few on top of old prints, just to see how they'll look, because often I end up getting ideas for future prints by just, you know, experimenting, throwing things together and seeing how they look. And, uh, it kills me that almost every time I do this, one of them looks way cooler than anything I've printed in the whole run. <laughs> but, uh... I might make use of that for, for something in the future.